Arata is in a dark black area, surrounded by nothing but darkness, and nearby he notices a girl running towards him. He knows that he must get to her and races toward her as well. He reaches out his hands hoping to grab onto hers, but suddenly, the dream is shattered and he awakens holding his cousin's opai. Welcome to Alabama, Japan. Arata wakes up to find himself accidentally groping his cousin Hijiri, and she's angry with him. He then notices the sun has turned black, but Hijiri acts like nothing is wrong. A mysterious girl in their school uniform warns Arata that she will eliminate him if he doesn't awaken, but before he can respond, she disappears. Arata begins to suspect that Hijiri is not who she seems when he notices that the picture she drew as a child depicts the sun as yellow, not black. Hijiri confirms that this is not the real world and this is the world that Arata wished for. She offers to yield to his desires if he chooses to stay with her, but before Arata can respond, the mysterious girl from before appears once more and attacks Hijiri. Hijiri reveals that she's a mage and that the town is in ruins. She gives Arata a grimoire and tells him that his wish was the cause of the disaster. Lilith, the mysterious girl, tells Arata that he has two choices, to live peacefully by surrendering the grimoire and his memories, or be killed. Arata chooses a third option, which is to become a mage and attend the Royal Biblia Academy. Arata is introduced as a transfer student to the Royal Biblia Academy, where he discovers he has the ability to perform magic which only a demon lord is capable of. This news spreads throughout the academy and the headmaster, Master Biblia, welcomes him to the academy and explains. It is a secret organization that teaches mages and assigns missions. Arata is told he needs to meet and dominate the Trinity Seven, seven expert female mages within the academy in order to rescue Ujiri. During his time at the academy, Arata meets several members of the Trinity Seven, including Lilith, Selina, Levi, Mira, and Akio. He also discovers most of the mages at the academy are female. As magic focuses on emotions and girls are more suited to it, he also learns mages must also restrain their desires as well. Arata is also confronted with the appearance of a girl resembling Hijiri in the boys' bathhouse, which turns out to be another member of the Trinity Seven, Aaron Kanazuki. He suspects Aaron and the Trinity Seven will be important in his journey to rescue Hijiri. Arata is followed by Aaron, who reveals she's observing him as his partner. He also learns that the grimoire he possesses is the Astil Manuscript, a legendary grimoire that possesses knowledge from another world. Lilith agrees to teach you magic, but Selina and Levi also join in with their own motives. During Lilith's class, Aaron continues to observe Arata, and later, Selina and Levi occupy his room to gather information. They discuss Thema, a theme each mage researchers from the archives of the Seven Deadly Sins. However, a blackout occurs, and the group finds themselves sealed within a barrier inside the room. Arata attempts to brute force the door, but they realize he's acting without reason due to the principles of magic. The group tries to find a way out of the barrier, but they do not discover any clues. As they search, they find there is no bathroom, and the girls eventually need to use one. Arata decides to consult Astil, but she's half asleep. Arata, Selina, and Levi deceive Astil into believing they discovered the solution, causing Astil to reveal the source of the barrier under the bed. After destroying the source, the barrier disappears, allowing the girls to escape to the bathroom. Outside, Aaron and another person observe the situation from top of a roof. Arata is introduced to the concept of Thema, which is a subject of research that mages dedicate their lives to and allows them to use magic. Erin reveals she sealed him in a barrier as part of an experiment set up by the headmaster to see if another breakdown phenomenon would occur. Arata is not upset by this and continues to be friends with Erin. During the experiment, Erin transforms into her magus mode and causes Arata's magic to become unstable, resulting in a breakdown phenomenon. Despite the dangerous effects, Erin is insistent on continuing the experiment for the sake of her research. Selina and Levi also learn about the breakdown phenomenon and Master Biblia, the head of the academy, is amused by Aaron's actions but cannot allow the school to disappear. To neutralize the breakdown phenomenon, Mira and Akio appear on the scene. Akio apologizes to Arata before dealing with a final strike to Arata. The ruckus ends with Aaron and Lilith paralyzed and the headmaster bound and panicked in a burning furnace. It seems Arata's actions have significant consequences and his desire to understand and control his powers will play an important role. Arata is now a chef working at a beach where girls are enjoying themselves. He ponders how he got there, and Lilith reminds him it is because he and Aaron destroyed the academy. Lilith forbids the two from performing any more experiments which could endanger the school. Lilith explains that the trip had already been planned, and the headmaster decided to use the opportunity to send the students on vacation while he repairs the academy. Arata is transported to a musical world where he meets Yui, a young girl who plays the violin. Yui reveals she transported him into her world before Akio nearly killed him and she tells Arata the cause of the breakdown phenomenon is him. Yui also tells Arata he can control the phenomenon by discovering his thema from the seven sins, superbia, invidia, 
Ira, Acedia, Varitiria, Gula, and Luxuria. Arata recalls Mira's theme Justitia from the Superbia Archive and realizes a clue to his own thema. Arata returns to the real world and explains to the Trinity Seven, who will try to control the breakdown phenomenon. Mira is insistent on eliminating him, but Akio convinces her to give Arata a chance. Arata agrees to their terms and informs the Astil manuscript of his thema, Rule of the Superbia Archive. As a result, Arata transforms into his Magus mode and destroys the breakdown phenomenon while also removing Lilith, Eren, and Akio's clothes, much to their shock. Only Mira is unaffected by reflecting his magic before leaving along with Akio. Subsequently, Arata's clothes also break apart, much to Lilith's chagrin. Arata recounts his experience to Selina and she becomes interested in his special technique in Magus mode. However, while they're discussing it, Levi starts to grope Lilith and she retaliates. Selina and Arata then escape to an empty area of the beach where Arata offers to display his Magus mode to her. Selina decides to test his magic by binding him with her logo sart, but Arata uses his magic to remove the binds, causing Selina's swimsuit to tear apart. Mira and Akio hear Selina scream and discuss the impurity of Arata's magic. Later that night, Selina and Levi overhear Arata and Lilith's room and begin imagining an erotic scene between the two. However, Lilith discovers them and punishes the two before the group discusses Arata's ascension to a mage in mixed bath. Later, Lilith reveals Arata's past with Ajiri to the girls as they walk toward the bath. Arata recalls the members of the Trinity Seven he has already encountered. Lilith, Eren, Levi, Mira, and Akio. He also reveals he has already encountered Yui and one of the remaining two members disappeared before Arata's admittance to the Academy. The group theorizes his role as a demon lord may allow him to copy other magic, but Lilith continues to decline. However, she finally relents when he states his strong desire to rescue Ujiri. Astil, Arata's grimoire, demonstrates and explains her magic outer alchemic by rewriting Lilith's magic into one that Arata could use, shocking the girls. Arata and Lilith discover that all their classmates have fallen asleep and suspect it may be a boycott of Lilith's class. However, they later learn from the headmaster the cause is a breakdown phenomenon that is affecting the student's ability to stay awake. The headmaster and the Trinity Seven discuss the source of the breakdown phenomenon, which is revealed to be powerful magic leaking from beneath the academy. Yui, a powerful mage who inhabits the dream world, is suspected to be the cause of the phenomenon. Arata and the Trinity Seven then enter a bizarre labyrinth that is said to have been caused by Yui's magic. They learn that Yui was sealed within the labyrinth due to her powerful cardinal-level magic, and her magic is powerful enough to make the whole world fall into slumber. Arata also feels responsible for Yui losing control of her magic, as he believes it may have been affected by his own demon lord magic. Trinity Seven continues to move forward in the labyrinth while discussing their plan to resolve the situation. They're warned the labyrinth will become increasingly dangerous, and are advised to transform into their magus mode. Levi suggests they continue forward before Mira and Aiko, who have left to eliminate the breakdown phenomenon, may erase Yui as part of Grimoire security. The Trinity Seven encounters a crowd of demonic shadows during the breakdown phenomenon. Arata attempts to create a gun but is unable to remember the process. The group discusses Levi's strength as one of the top five stronger mages in the world, as well as her relationship with Yui. The party traverses through a dark section before Lilith and Arata suddenly feel themselves being touched. Eren then uses a light spell to reveal the culprits to be a small shadow demon that disintegrate by the light. Arata requests Astil to also try copying the magic, but the grimoire states the process has not be completed, revealing certain conditions must be satisfied. After the group contemplates the conditions, Eren casts a protective spell over Arata. As the Trinity Seven battle through the demonic shadows, the girls explain to Arata about the basics of grimoires and spells, since his magic is necessary to rescue Yui. The party then arrives at the final level before suddenly encountering Mira and Akio. Grimoire security members then proceed toward Yui, however Arata tries to convince them to avoid erasing her. When Mira threatens to erase him instead, Levi intervenes to stall the two while Arata and the others head to Yui's location. Arriving at Yui's room, the three discover a large amount of miasma coming from a dragon creature guarding Yui. Arata notes her appearance is different, and Arin explains he encountered her ideal form in the dream world. Suddenly, the dragon awakens before causing Arata to collapse and develop wings again due to his magic, resonating with the creature. The beast then begins to attack when Mira and Aiko unexpectedly appear. The group is initially concerned for Levi's safety until the ninja reveals her presence, having formed a truce with Grimoire security to handle the phantasmal dragon. While the Trinity Seven suppress the phantasm, Levi guides Arata in stabilizing his magic before discussing Levi's relationship with Yui and the concept of the Thema. Later, Levi joins the battle as Lilith teaches Arata the process to use her magic. However, both Lilith and the Astil manuscript warn Arata of the risk of using Outer Alchemic, which could result in him transforming into a more powerful creature than the dragon. Although initially afraid, he nevertheless decides to continue before Levi offers her advice to summon the gun. As such, 
Arata manages to successfully perform the summoning of the gun and obliterates the dragon. In the aftermath, Yui awakens to discover herself surrounded by the group, and upon seeing Arata, Yui happily embraces him. Meanwhile, Levi contemplates Arata's potential, becoming interested in his future. Upon awakening, Arata discovers both Yui and Eren asleep in his bed. Lilith arrives to retrieve him, but becomes shocked by the situation until Arata requests her to join them. Outside during gym class, Arata admires the girls in their gym uniforms, especially Yui and Eren who are quite affectionate towards him, as well as Lilith. The group is then approached by Mira and Akio, and the former warns Yui, despite the previous incident being resolved, where more security will remain vigilant against Yui and Arata. Suddenly finding himself in Yui's room, Yui in her dream form welcomes Arata once again. While the other girls have fallen asleep, only Mira remains awake having used her scope to reflect Yui's magic before departing. Afterward, Yui attempts to kiss Arata, but he insists they become more familiar with one another much to her disappointment. Subsequently, Arata discusses her thema, friendship, but Yui confirms that she's not close to anyone. Nevertheless, Arata suggests the two then become friends. Before they decide to return, Yui kisses on Arata's cheek, expressing her gratitude for rescuing her. In the normal world, while Yui and Arata remain asleep, the other girls notice he has currently encountered six members of the Trinity Seven. However, the last member's location remains unaccounted for, but Selina remains hopeful. Arata can change the situation since he managed to rescue Yui. At night, Mira ponders in the shower until Okio abruptly startles her. Afterward, the two relax in the bath while discussing the recent breakdown phenomenon and the Demon Lord candidate. Nevertheless, the members of Grimoire security resolve to eliminate the impurities. Later, during a storm, an unknown female student resembling Selina calmly strolls through the halls as windows shatter. In the aftermath, students gather around the remains of the previous night's destruction as Arata arrives at the scene. Lilith explains apparently someone broke into the academy when Grimoire security accuses Arata of being the culprit, since there were traces of a breakdown phenomenon. Suddenly, Yui appears but denies any involvement since her breakdown phenomenon would cause the population to fall asleep. Mira concludes neither Arata nor Yui was the cause, but notes the magic resembles the one in the library. Arata and his friends investigate the ghost that appears in the library during stormy days. They arrive at the library and find themselves teleported to the Eternal Library, where they encounter Lisalot Sherlock, Selina's elder twin sister, and the figure behind the ghost. Lisalot is a former second-in-command of Grimoire Security and the Trinity Seven of Acedia. She attempts to steal the party's magic for her research and reveals her motivation for joining Grimoire Security was to study breakdown phenomenon. Lisalot also reveals she has become a Demon Lord candidate and is willing to steal magic to increase her own. The group tries to battle Lisalot, but she manages to steal Selina's magic and increase her own. Lisalot also discusses with Arata the taboo magic before stealing Selina's magic. Selina and the others are shocked by Lisalot's actions, and they prepare to fight her. Lisalot's actions were driven by her research and desire to become a Demon Lord candidate, and her actions are seen as taboo by others. As Lisalot displays her recently acquired magic, the group is shocked by the revelation of her becoming a Demon Lord candidate. Lisalot defends her actions, believing that the desire of any mage is to become the Demon Lord. However, Arata chooses to confront her. Despite her knowledge of his magic and her offer to help him rescue his cousin Hijiri, he transforms into his magus mode and Levi and Mira also engage in battle with Lisalot. Mira attempts to analyze Lisalot's magic, but ultimately fails to damage her, and Levi is able to outmaneuver her teleportation. Lisalot becomes shocked and chooses to retreat, promising to return after stabilizing her magic and mastering Arata's magic. The party is transported back to the library, but the situation remains dire, as Lisalot will have mastered Arata's magic in their next confrontation. Although reluctant, Mira decides Grimoire Security will train Arata before Lisalot returns. Outside of Biblia Academy, Mira informs Arata his strength is required to defeat Lisalot. As such, both she and Akia will train him to copy the latter's mantra and chant magic. Although Arata is still unaware of the process, Akio nevertheless begins the session and the group is determined to defeat Lisalot. Lilith and the other Trinity Seven girls discuss Arata's training with Grimoire Security, and the possibility of Lisalot's arrival. Meanwhile, Arata continues to train with Mira and Akio. In the infirmary, Levy warns the group Lisalot may arrive soon, and shadow creatures appear throughout the academy, causing panic among the students. Lisalot arrives and confronts the headmaster, declaring she will defeat him before ordering the demons to attack. The headmaster easily disposes of the creatures and lectures Lisalot on the proper use of magic in battle. Despite Lisalot's attempts to bind him, the headmaster effortlessly removes the bindings and reveals his own strength. Lisalot is awed by his power, and the headmaster continues to lecture her while a demonic gate appears behind him. The situation remains dire as Lisalot's arrival causes panic and destruction among the student population. Master Biblia reveals that the spectacle Lisalot is witnessing is his grimoire, Solomon's Gate which can only be seen by those with a certain amount of magic. Gazing at the Grimoire for extended periods of time can cause people to lose their minds. 
and the Trinity Seven is forced to reduce her magic to defeat the Headmaster. The Headmaster comments on Lisalot's growth and warns her that wicked mages have always been defeated upon receiving great power. Arata and Grimoire Security notice Lisalot's presence, but Arata continues his training to learn Akio's magic, and the Astil manuscript reveals that Lisalot has already completed the process to copy Mantra and Chant, much to their surprise. Lisalot then appears in the infirmary and ensnares the remaining members of Trinity Seven, but Arata, now recovered, and Sora, the name Astil was addressed by Hijiri, appear with an updated Magus mode and a dragon controlled by him. Sora successfully performs Mantra and Chant and explains the process to Arata, which requires willpower. Akio then reveals the spell to invoke her magic, causing Arata to witness a vision of a desolate area while a young Akio in a nun outfit prays with a smile. The Trinity Seven collapses as Arata is confused by the experience. Arata is able to perform Akio's magic and attempts to use it on Lisalot. However, this causes her blouse to fall and reveals her breasts. Much to her and Lilith's chagrin, Lisalot quickly recovers her magic and easily avoids Arata's attempts to claim her Demon Lord element, in spite of Sora's ability to foresee her moves. Arata is also able to protect himself from her attacks using Mantra and Chant. Lisalot decides to cast the final crest of the Asidia Archive, Bal Peor, to seemingly stop time excluding herself, Arata, and Sora. While she isn't able to interact with those frozen, she can easily use the spell on Arata to steal his magic again. Nevertheless, Arata remains resolute in his desire to rescue Hijiri, signaling to Sora his plan before attempting to reach Lisalot. Lisalot believes that she has emerged victorious after kissing Arata, but instead she loses control of her magic upon discovering that a mantra and chant seal was placed on his tongue. Sora is curious about the reason for his strong willpower, which he reveals as his vision of the young Akio continuously praying. Arata comforts Lisalot, stating both he and the rest of the group desires her to return with him. However, Lisalot is unable to leave the stagnant world due to invoking her last crest and does not regret her decision for the sake of research. Nevertheless, Arata refuses to accept her decision, promising to liberate her. Arata declares once more he will rescue Lisalot, but he suddenly finds himself in the normal world. After learning of Lisalot's fate, Selina and the group are disappointed, but Mira questions Sora about her master's progress on learning the incapacitated Logo's art, which the grimoire states, the guy is close. Mira orders Selina to support Arata in mastering the magic in order to liberate Lisalot from captivity. Selina and Arata resolve to work together to rectify her sister's situation. Meanwhile, Master Biblia comments on Arata and the Trinity Seven's progress, but his assistant arrives to confirm the revelation that another school had been destroyed by a group of evil mages called Iscariot. Meanwhile, a lone figure resembling Hijiri walks through the ruins of a town. Now Arata seeks advice and assistance from his classmates in order to master Lisalot's Logos art magic. Lilith observes these interactions and expresses concern about Arata losing control of his magic. Despite this, Arata is determined to become stronger in order to rescue Lisalot and find Ijiri. Arata, Lilith, and Sora are called to the Headmaster's office, where they are appointed as assistant chiefs and supervisors of Grimoire Security for the next inspection. The location of their assignment is revealed to be the Royal Lieber Magic Academy, which has recently disappeared. The Headmaster assigns the girls to ensure Arata is sufficiently prepared for the mission, despite Mira's protests. When they return to Arata's room, Lilith tries to begin their tutoring session, but is interrupted by the arrival of Levi, Selina, Aaron, and Yui. Arata leads a discussion about each of the Trinity Seven's archives and their themas. Lilith becomes hesitant in disclosing her affiliation, but after Arata's imploring, she reveals herself as Luxuria of Lust to her embarrassment. After the group teases her, Arata discusses how their themas reflect the opposite of their personalities. Lilith finally starts her tutoring session with Arata, which continues until night. With Lilith falling asleep, Arata and Sora take a rest in Arata's room when Akio and Mira arrive and find them in a compromising position. Akio explains the purpose of the Magic Academy is to investigate the breakdown phenomenon and eliminate the source. The group will travel to the Academy's location the next day through a magic teleporter. The next day, Lilith and Arata conclude their session and Lilith has one more lesson for him. Later, Arata finds himself relaxing in a hot spring with several of the other girls, notably Yui who was not present during the previous excursion. Lilith approaches him and leads him to an area with an excellent view of the sun, setting over the town as a method to recover his magic and mental strength. Lilith and Arata enjoy playing around in the water together while the remaining girls observe from afar. However, an incident between Lilith and Arata causes him embarrassment. The next day, Master Biblia greets the group prior to their teleportation to Liber Academy. During the teleportation process, the party senses someone interfering and the machine begins to malfunction. However, they decide to continue despite the risks. Upon regaining consciousness, Arata, Sora, and Mira find themselves in front of unknown buildings. They soon discover they have successfully teleported to Liber Academy, but are greeted by an imposter, Hijiri. Mira quickly recognizes her as an imposter and attempts to attack her, but the imposter escapes before Arata can discover her true identity. 
Arata, Mira, and Sora continue to explore the academy and learn the area has been sealed with a barrier and isolated in an alternate dimension. They're also attacked by demons. Sora reveals that Magus Mode has been prohibited within the barrier, but Arata and Mira escape while Sora easily defeats the demons. Arata and Mira find temporary shelter in an empty classroom and discuss an alternative plan to escape without defeating the culprit. They decide to investigate the possibility of destroying the core of the barrier. Arata decides to investigate the center of the academy while Mira stays in the room to recover. Sora continues to easily dispatch shadows and determines their former students of the academy. However, Ijiri appears and reveals they're simply puppets, leading to a battle between Sora and the imposter. Sora is trapped in the end, the imposter decides to meet with Arata. Arata and Mira arrive at a clock tower in the center of the academy, suspecting it to be the location of the barrier's core. While climbing the tower, Arata inquires about Mira's reasons for joining Grimoire Security. Mira reveals her past as a delinquent and how her friendship with Aiko, a member of the Trinity Seven, helped her become more prideful of her magic. The two continue to climb the tower while discussing Mira's past. Because of her personality, Mira did not have any close friends until Akio, a member of the Trinity Seven, approached the timid girl outside for support in her research, unafraid of her strong magic. Afterward, Akio would have Mira join her in several activities and the two would soon become close friends. One morning, Mira attempted to perform a magical experiment alone in the classroom, but the process failed which caused a backlash that rendered her unconscious before Akio found her soon after. Upon regaining conscience, Mira discovers herself being carried by the Trinity Seven who encourages her to become more prideful of her magic. Akio's encouragement would strongly influence Mira who admired the upperclassmen for her strength. After recalling Akio's guidance, Mira becomes embarrassed realizing she revealed her history to Arata, but the Demon Lord candidate is nonetheless satisfied to learn more about her, as well as assisting in relieving her stress before climbing to the top. Arata and Mira discover a confined Sora and Ijiri on the roof of the clock tower. Hijiri reveals herself to be the Lias Fragment, a grimoire who replicated his actual cousin's memories and appearance in order to care for Arata while the original was away. The Lias Fragment announces her intention to dispose of Mira and live with Arata together inside the barrier until Hijiri completes destroying the world. The Lias Fragment accepts Arata's condition of allowing Mira to depart while he stays with her, but soon reveals her true intention of eliminating Mira. Arata attempts to intervene, but Hijiri binds him and begins to drain Sora's magic as storage. As Mira and Sora suffer, Arata is consumed by his anger, and his dark aura begins to manifest, leading to the emergence of Astral Trinity, the demon lord within Arata. Ijiri is frightened by the sudden change in Arata and is unclear what will happen next. As Astral Trinity, Arata's demon form appears, he forcibly dispels Laia's fragment's magic, revealing her true appearance while also liberating Sora from her imprisonment. However, in a display of power, the demon lord also summons a breakdown phenomenon which begins destroying the surrounding area. The situation then prompts a recovered Mira and Sora to confront Astral, but are easily defeated due to his anti-magic. Subsequently, the demon senses potential in Trinity Seven, demanding she submits to him before attempting a kiss, causing Mira to slap him in protest in favor of Arata. Fortunately, her actions manages to disrupt Astral for an opportunity for Sora to seal the Lord and return Arata to his normal state. Although Arata has returned to normal, the group remains confined within the concealed barrier, controlled by Leia who would have to be eliminated. Instead, the Demon Lord candidates request that she join him in the real world, grateful for her support as Ijiri despite the Grimoire's earlier actions. However, due to Astral Trinity's breakdown phenomenon, she has lost control of reality which forces the team to combine their magic in order to destroy the magical anomaly. With Leah's support, their plan is successful, returning them to the original reality before reuniting with Lilith and Akio. As the group decides to recover in a safe location, a mysterious group including Hijiri observes the party before the missing cousin notes, Arata and she has become enemies. After the incident at Liber Academy, the Trinity Seven discuss Arata's dangerous transformation into Astral Trinity and the possibility of eliminating him. However, they quickly dismiss the idea and focus on the suspect behind the recent incidents, Hijiri. Hijiri approaches Arata and the two are reunited, but their circumstances have forced them to become enemies. Hijiri reveals she has obtained the Demon Lord element and plans to eliminate Arata. But Lilith intervenes. The group is unable to defeat Hijiri, who reveals she has also mastered the Trinity and plans to destroy the Royal Biblia Academy. Eren, who is summoned by Arata, is able to neutralize Hijiri's magic, and Hijiri retreats. The group decides to return to the Academy to support Levi and Yui, and Arata resolves to reach his cousin again. Meanwhile, an unknown girl observes the destruction of the Royal Biblia Academy from above. Levi is the only one of the Trinity Seven left to defend the school from a new threat, Lu whom herself is a Demon Lord candidate intending to take over the school for her partner, who's a mysterious hooded figure. Levi would have more of a chance if Biblia, the headmaster, would do more than simply cheer her on, but it seems that Lu's mysterious partner decides to target him. 
Meanwhile, Yui informs Levi she has evacuated all the students to her dream, reassuring everyone's safety. So the battle continues one on one with Levi at odds with Lu's overwhelming strength, though she manages to slice Lu's throat for once. Levi admits that there is no way she can beat Lu's speed. The headmaster, apparently in a panic, shouts for her to stop, but she doesn't. She unleashes her ultimate technique. Lu perceives the nature of the attack and destroys it, disappointed at Levi's attack of mere overwhelming strength. However, as Lu looks again, she realizes Levi is gone. It seems Levi used her spell's ferocity to cover her retreat. Meanwhile, Arata, Lilith, Akio, Mira, and Sora are trapped in the other dimension since their teleporter is destroyed. So now Lilith and the other members of the Trinity Seven conjure up their power to fix the teleporter and reach to their struggling friends in time. Back at the Academy, Levi manages to drag and bind Lu with her threads. Lu then connects the NVIDIA Archive to summon three mythical armaments that gets her out of the trap. She even manages to cut down Levi, rendering her mobile and severely wounded. Selina jumps into the scene from the dream to aid Levi and manages to bind Lu with her camera. But Lu just releases a huge energy towards the girls. To her shock, however, now Lee Salat appears in her sister Selina's body to fight off the persistent Lu. She first manages to destroy one of the Lu's weapons by healing Levi alongside. With Levi healed, they trickily manage to subdue Lu. Fearing she might lose the battle, she summons Ijiri, who appears through a gate. Ijiri is surprised to see Lee Salat fighting from the opposite side, so she feels betrayed. Yui also arrives to back them up. The portal opens from above when Hijiri is just about to blow the three girls. From above, Arata falls and crashes with Lu. The rest of the group is back and Lisa Lot confirms to Hijiri she's with Arata's group this time. Arata too assures Hijiri it's time for them to fight back. Though Arata is back with a Trinity Seven, his magic is not recovered yet. This fact Hijiri realizes, but nevertheless, they're ready to battle. All of them connect to their respective archives and execute their themes and the scene is quite mesmerizing to see both parties ready to battle. It is revealed that the mysterious hooded figure who was against the Headmaster Biblia is actually the Headmaster Liber of the Liber Academy. They spectate the battle from above. The combined efforts of the Trinity Seven manage to first knock out Lu by destroying her weapon. They struggle to break through Hijiri's magic defense, but Levi uses her swap technique, allowing Eren to break through the defense. Lilith and Arata deal the decisive blow to Hijiri, thereby ending the whole matter. Hijiri, then totally wounded from the battle, describes why she had become a member of Iscariot. She says because of the breakdown phenomenon, she had become disassociated with time and space. She saw the world from the outside. From her vantage point, she saw Arata seduce the Trinity Seven and destroy the world, through multiple timelines, over and over and over again. The world they're in right now repeats itself, using Arata as a tool for destruction, which is not to Jiri's liking. So her goal as a part of Iscariot is to destroy the world and remake it. But Arata assures he will control the entire world if needed, as his theme has controlled. Finally, Hiji returns into a shiny stone since she's just drifting about a rift in space-time. This stone is acquired by Liber, who thinks it valuable for Iscariot to hold something with the caliber of combating the Demon Lord. With those words, she vanishes in thin air. Sometime later, Lilith takes Arata out of town. With that, she tries to take Arata's mind off what happened to Hijiri. On one hand, she just wants a day with Arata to herself. She protests that she's his teacher and can't have feelings for him, but it's clear she digs him. On the other hand, she really wants to help him feel better. The other members of the Trinity Seven, excluding Akio and Mira, trail them to make sure nothing too affectionate happens. Levi appears to just enjoy the show. Yui looks scandalized, whereas Aaron looks like she's thinking, yeah, my husband is cheating yet again. Selena just looks mildly concerned. At least three of the Trinity Seven aren't happy with the attention Arata was giving Lilith. Finally, the women trailing Arata and Lilith come out of hiding. Partly they're starving, and partly Aaron and Yui have had enough of being ignored. They decide to go get something to eat together specifically a restaurant where Mira rocks a maid's outfit and Mira cooks. They look happy and carefree as they stroll along the streets, just enjoying each other's company. Arata notices it too. Hanging back, taking a look at the sky, he silently promises Ijiri that he will definitely rescue her. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.